What's up, chat? It's me, SD, and today marks a little milestone. My very first podcast, and you're here to celebrate it with me. So please send me gifts to, nah, just kidding. But hey, if you want to, I'm sure you can figure out how. Anyway, welcome to the very first episode of Zero to 2K MRR. I'm super pumped to kick this off with you all. So what's the deal with this podcast? Well, the purpose here is simple, to document what it's like to take a company from zero monthly revenue to over 2,000 monthly recurring revenue. We're talking about companies that don't even have a digital footprint yet. No domain, no website, nada. These are just ideas that might only exist in our minds, or if you're like me, they're scribbled down in your notes app. Now, let's be clear. This won't be us just building an app and hoping people will stumble across it. Building, in my opinion, is the easiest part, especially with the help of AI. I'm estimating that development will take about 10% of our total effort, with 90% going into marketing. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So for today's episode, we're going to figure out what SaaS product we want to create by diving deep into Reddit. Yes, the whole world hangs out on Reddit. So why not start there? And a quick note before we get started, when I say we're looking for a product to sell, I'm not talking about physical products. No need to mess with shipping, working with Alibaba. We're becoming a supply chain expert. We're keeping it digital. Finding the right product idea is the most critical part of the process. I know the urge to build something because you have a problem and you want to solve it. But remember, you're not the only one who will be buying your product. For this podcast, we're not going to focus on what you want. We're focusing on what your paying customers want. This is actually a mistake I made when I founded my last company. I decided to fundraise and build a product because I had a pain point in the travel process. Every VC asked me about product market fit, and I looked at them like a deer in the headlight, not making that mistake again. So today, I'm going to show you a tool that can help you find a product that's actually worth building. Now, this stage of the product market fit doesn't have to be a struggle. Let's get off that struggle bus and head to our first stop, Gummy Search. All right, so what is Gummy Search? Well, the TLDR is that it's a research tool for Reddit. You can discover problems to solve, sentiment on current solutions, and most importantly, find people who want to buy your product. So head on over to gummysearch.com. And one of the things that I love about this product is that it gives you the option to purchase a day pass for 10 bucks. Now, if you're like me, you can get a lot done in a day. So be ready to commit a few hours to using the tool so you make sure you get your money's worth. Let's jump into how we identify some pain points and market gaps by analyzing where the whole world hangs out. Ready? Click on audiences. You'll see that, you know, I've already saved a few. Like pain points people have with dog food. Uh, you'll see people who like gel eggs, even ask old people advice. Next, let's click on trending. We need to find emerging and growing communities. So let's filter this down to group sizes between 10,000 and 100,000 members. Remember, we're not selling to the whole world, just a small piece of it. We have to niche it down. Now we are going to switch to growing subreddits. And now again, we need to adjust the filter again. So put it at 10,000 to 100,000. Our time frame, we want to look at weekly growth. Now, you just don't want to pick any one. You want to see which one of these, you know, kind of which one resonates with you. So we will see business fashion. OK, let's go with women in tech because that's me. Right. I can I can understand that. <laughs> now we're going to click add to audience and we're going to name this audience. I give it. I mean, whatever name makes sense to you, just go ahead and put that there. Now, we're going to include some similar subreddits. We will do career advice, career guidance, maybe career change. And we're going to add that to an audience. 
Now I already have the audience, so let me just click back over here. And I have women who like tape. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna look at is pain and anger. We're gonna look for patterns that's being discussed here. We're gonna wait for that to spin. Okay, cool. Now, I always like to read like this first paragraph right here to kind of get like a, a understanding of it. Cool, so now we're gonna go to common patterns. Okay, great. So now it is, what it's going to do is that it's going to summarize 182 submissions. This is going to save you 236 minutes by not reading, what's that, over 57,000 words. Cool. This AI minutes, now you need to pay close attention to this. So you only, when you watch your day pass, you only get 2,000 um, minutes for that day pass. Now, what it's doing is that it's summarizing, let's say, the 182 Reddit posts to find common patterns. So let's capture as much data as we can. Now, I already calculated this, and I don't want to lose more minutes, so let me just view the results. Okay. Now, as you analyze these patterns, you'll start to see common things like career uncertainty, uh, decision making and let's say uh, we also see job dissatisfaction so maybe this sparks an idea for a service to create maybe an ai chatbot that helps people decide whether to quit their job okay now what you can do is i like to look and see like how many upvotes and how many comments each one has gotten so then i know like a lot of people are experiencing this so here, I see a lot of comments happening on decision making. Uh, here's one, 25, never work, feel lost and unmotivated. What can I do? This is good. I mean, it has like almost 700 upvotes, around 600 people commenting. So you can see like a lot of people are kind of, you know, having this same problem. Now, uh, sometimes these don't give you much, but that's okay. You, we're just trying to find patterns here. So if we look at this one, like some missed opportunities, uh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this one because it's not a lot of people talking about this. Now, what you want to do is you want to step and repeat these steps for the next three to four communities. Now, I am going to go over to my sheets. And you can see that I've done this for cleaning and tidying, gel -X nails, ask old people advice, Airbnb, and dog food. Now, each community has its own set of pain points, advice requests, and solution requests. Now, we're gonna go back. Something else I like to look at is advice requests. Again, these are people asking for advice and resources. Make sure we check this out. Okay, I like the summary of this. I wanna find common patterns again. So now we see that the AI is summarizing 200 of those submissions. I already did this. I don't want to lose my more minutes by recalculating. So let's view the results. Okay, that's getting good. Again, I'm starting to see the same thing in pain and anger. Seeking guidance or advice, career advancement, growth opportunities, high earning potential careers, seeking advice again. So Everything should start flowing. It should help you start thinking about uh, new solutions that you can build. Now, the other thing I like to look at is solution requests. These are people who are practically asking for the existence of certain solutions. Now, sometimes these don't give you much, but again, that's okay. We're just trying to find patterns. And we'll see, well, it's only 44 submissions. Again, I don't want to recalculate this. I'm going to view the results. Mm, this really didn't give me too much. So I, I think we're good there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to find creators in these niches. So I use Perplexity AI. Again, the TLDR on Perplexity is that it's like a super smart, search engine 
that gives you straight to the point answers instead of making you dig through a bunch of links. For example, I use this prompt. Give me the 25 most popular dog influencers on YouTube. I don't want any funny YouTubers, just educational ones. So I see what it gave me. Okay, based on this, it gave me about like 25. So just randomly start going through these. Let's look at Zach George's dog training revolution. Cool. All right, look at this. We see it's like 3.7 million subscribers. Have a look through the videos. See, you know, how top quality quality they are. So here we go. You can still, like people are pretty, they're engaging with this product. So we're doing this because we need to put a pin on these uh, influencers because we're going to reach out back to them later. Now, spend about 30 minutes on Gummy Search. Now, you need to explore subreddits again that are relevant to you that you understand. And then note down the top five problems people are discussing. So again, like I'm into data, I love data. So for each one, you see I have the tabs here. It's the same thing. I keep all of these headers and then I go through and start writing each, each thing now. Startup world, speed is everything. If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> Just kidding, but seriously, Moving from idea to product quickly is crucial. With the help of AI, what used to take three to four months of overseas development can now be done in three to four weeks. And the cost, just the monthly fees for the AI tools you use and your time. Let's get into the tools I use for coding. But before we dive in, if you're thinking of starting to code on your own, there's one basic skill you need to have. Troubleshooting. You don't need to know Python, Flask, or any other coding language right off the bat. So don't come into this thinking, oh, I don't know how to code. That's fine. Your AI companion does. And it will walk you through the process step by step. I like to use a mix of tools to get my final product. I normally start with Claude. Now, first, you need to create a project. Trust me, you'll thank me for this later. When you create a project, you're giving Claude a memory bank to pull from. Let's say after you've asked Claude hmm, maybe 50 different questions, it'll eventually tell you that the chat is too long and suggest you start a new one. Well, what happens to all that information you've given Claude in the chat window? If you create a new chat, will it be able to pull from your previous history? Well, a few months ago, it couldn't. But if you create a project, when you start a new chat, you can reference that project and Claude will remember everything. Game changer. Let's create a new project. Now we need to name our project. We'll call it my first app. And now we need to describe the project. This is a new project. And let's do create project. Now we need to give Claude a prompt for what we're trying to create. And I already have one here. Okay, so I put, I'm very new to programming. I want to create an AI chatbot that will help people decide if they should quit their job or not. I will be using Replit to code in and I want to use Python as the backend language using Flask. Now let's let this go. Now, you'll see that Claude will give you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. Here we go. Now, as a beginner, I'd suggest starting out with, um, with Replit and Python because they'll be the most user-friendly options for you. But let's say you get stuck in the loop. And what I mean by that is you have a bug and your code won't run. You keep asking Claude and based on the error message, you need to make a few changes to certain files, but it still doesn't work. Stop using Claude and head over to GPT. But before you do, ask Claude this. Give me a README page for my app to use in GitHub, but don't include the setup and installation. In the text section, in the text stack section, make sure to include that I'm using Replit. Cool. Certainly, I'll create a README for, you or for your GitHub repository. Perfect. Now you see what it's doing. It's giving you 
a description of your chatbot, all the features, the tech stack, and any future enhancements and things like that. Now, this gives ChatGPT context on what you've already built. Then start troubleshooting there. And hey, if that fails or if you don't want to develop your MVP, ping me. Shameless plug, but I could possibly do it for you. Now, let me share a couple projects uh, that I've developed using AI. The first is AI Roam. It's an app that generates a travel itinerary for you based on your travel style. The second is Barkify. Now that's a dog breed recommendation app that matches you with a dog breed based on your Spotify playlist. The next episode, we'll dive into marketing. You won't want to miss it. So if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, share it with others, and don't forget, follow me on LinkedIn where I'm documenting this entire journey. See you later.